Greetings and salutations. This is Evelyn Valley. Well, I'm not going. In fact, I kind of want to just put aside the facade of me. Uh, Evelyn O'Malley made it around for a few seconds. Don't worry, I'm still Evelyn. You can still call me that. I'm still going to be that. I just want to put it off for just a few minutes. As you know, I did an update video not too long ago. And I wanted to talk about a few things. They're on YouTube. What do you guys want me to do? What, what things do you wish for me to fulfill? I know I do a lot of talking and a lot of it's really, you know, high up, high class. Oh, look, look at the black girl trying to be all, you know, trying to be religious and stuff. But, you know, the thing is, I'm no different than you people. My videos may not touch on every base that you might reach, but, you know, all my tea times are centered around, well, tea and talking to you people about certain things. But, let's just talk about stuff that well, you may not be able to talk to other people in your life. Like, okay, we'll say if you're a parent, you can't talk to your children about the 80s. Um, you certainly can't. If you're a kid, you can't talk about your generation to your parents because they look at you and go, what is wrong with my child? <laughs> and likewise, like I said with that, but parents. So, yeah, we always had those issues. Generation fighting, inviting, out fighting, whatever comes first. Yes. Uh, but generally, you two are about one and same thing. You know, we will always have a generational gap, doesn't matter. And yes, I'm aware of my happy in a mess. And shut up out there! Sorry. Hey, we bit of a car alarm outside. Sorry, our neighbors suck. <laughs> do your fa do yourself a favor. If you ever start a YouTube vlog, go out to the middle of nowhere and try that. I mean, I guess you get less visitors, but then if your internet goes out, you're pretty much screwed on that. And if you don't have someone there to, who knows how to work computers. Ugh, sorry. I just wanted to talk about a few things. Like, tonight I just watched part one and part two of my favorite trilogy, Back to the Future. And for those people who don't know, it's basically Marty McFly goes back in time. And I know I mentioned the 80s and parents and blah, 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 blah. blah. But, let's just touch base on the fact he's supposed to be 17, at least Michael J. Fox is supposed to be playing 17-year-old Marty McFly. Man, looks damn fine back in that day. Not saying he doesn't look good now, he looked fine then. And too. But I found it to be interesting. Hey, As a story, and as just all-around culture, a phenomenon because well let's put it this way for your generation we decided to go back to the 60s and as a black person I'm proud and then again I'm also like mm -hmm. you know that's what I was thinking like yeah thanks but they were revolutionary people in the 50s, too, who happened to be black, like Jackie Robinson. What about them? Are we just to get them, toss them aside? You know, we did do an interesting remake that I wanted to see, because it was the 1940s. 
the way it was supposed to be presented. But you know, I think the 80s were going, were inevitable. They were going to take stuff from the 40s and 50s, anyways, and do whatever they want. Anyways, like I said, we were living those two decades, the 40s and 50s. And I think it's the only time I ever heard both of those decades mentioned in the same sentence. It's usually 30s and 40s, but whatever. You know, that's besides the point. Uh, what I like about these, the first two of the series is, well, they go back to the 50s. I like Biff, and Biff has a character, he's, I can't remember who plays him per se, it's not important that you know who plays him, it's just, I mean, I guess it is, and if that's the part that you care about, it's more the character that I like. I sort of like the character art. Uh, what he's supposed to be, he's like this big jerk who is supposed to be so stupid, he can't even get insults correct, which is funny, actually. Um, because he makes jokes like, okay, ever heard of the saying, make like a tree and leave? Well, he does the make like a tree and get out of here. There are also little touches to Back to the Future that I do like, and that they probably do get wrong. But since we're not looking at the full scale of the time period, we're just looking at little sets like, okay, Lorraine's house. I like Lorraine's house. That drive looks very authentically 50s. It is the way it's supposed to be, or at least for the Irish household, because, well, Turns out, uh, they're possibly Irish or Scottish, depending on the situation. No offense, but they had to go through quite the English had to go through quite a bit of pain and turmoil to get to where they are today. And it seems like every generation, yeah, we look at that that sort of thing. Anyways, that's besides the point. I think I the only reason why I know that they're Irish is because of the third film, which by the way I did not watch because uh that one didn't make much sense to me because you basically went back in time to look at Yeah, like just one like what are we supposed to be fixing here other than Doc gets a girlfriend, which is cool and awesome, but slightly pointless. No offense, but, you know, what does this have anything to do with the rest of the trilogy? And, you know, that that's just where it falls apart. I understood going back to the 50s. I understand going ahead to the 19... 19... to 2015 and fixing all the problems. Depends with that time period, because God only knows I don't look forward to 20... Let's put it this way. I'm already cringing at the idea to 2030. I'm not looking forward to 19... to 2015, sorry. Can I get my set head out of the 20th century? God knows, but, but mind you, I was born and raised in that time period, so... At least the end of it anyway. So, that's the only reason why I think the third film made any sense was, well, where it's 1985, so 1985 means 1885. The only way those two, those two decades click. And that's it. Um, other touches would be November 5th, 1955, which is when they if at actual time period they go back to. And I actually kind of think about it and I go, well, that's the same day as Guy Fox Day. I probably will do more research into finding out if that has anything to do with anything with this film. Like, what about that date? They put so many different dates and, you know, they had other little touches like uh, Marvin Barry. Instead of Chuck Berry, you know, Marvin Berry is the fictional, as far as I know, 
the fictional brother to Chuck Berry. Sorry, the computer went dark there. It probably would do a lot better for my eyes. Swear to God. You probably see everything in my eyes right now. And I wish I could get sassy and all my clothes off. It would be kind of cool. Um, and to go into, I know I'm running past the time I actually wanted, but whatever. Uh, then you got that other things like my favorite character. I was probably say my favorite part of twenty, and that was the first film, by the way. The what I said about the 20, November fifth, nineteen fifty-five. Yeah, that. That's Guy Fox Day in England, and I guess, I don't know if that was important to England, but, well, I know it's important to them historically, historical-wise, but I don't know if, if that's important to us. Um, next being, I don't know what date they will go back to in the second film, but, uh, there's certain parts of that film that make me cringe too because of how frightening it is. Because it's supposed to be frightening. Because we're going ahead into the future. Kind of the point. Hey, we're looking at a time period before us, and that's just as scary as looking back at a past that we left. Hey, you know, and how people would perceive us then, and if people would agree with how we live our lives now. So, um. Let's see. What I liked about 20, uh, Back to the Future Part 2, well, one, it had a cool premise. Now, if the future actually looked that way, it would be even funnier. There, but then again, thank God it didn't. There's some things I'm very happy that it was wrong about. Yes, thank you so much, world. Huh? Make me fear that I have to say I'll have to do my own vlog on New Year's Day just talking about 1999 and just the ilk of that, the Y2K ilk of that time. So it was, it was bad. It was really, really, really bad. Okay, but it did get her attention. It did frighten us. And hey, Twenty ninety nine isn't too far off. Who's to say? But that doesn't matter. By that point, I'm hoping to be dead anyway, so I'll be turning a hundred years old in twenty ninety. Okay, so by that point, you suckers are all gonna be on your own. No offense, but still, I ain't gonna be alive. Right? You know, not I'm not living through another Y two K. Or in this case, it actually wouldn't be a Y2K, would it? Hey, because technically it would be, yeah, it'd just be another century. That's it. So I guess it wouldn't be so bad, the same thing, just about, you know, more of the same ilk. But anyways, it's like the original rock with it. Uh, why did I like that one? Oh, yeah, there's other things. It was also kind of scary like, when it became, you know, Hell Valley became Hell Valley. Yes, we decided we'd break the rules here, because I know on television we say all matter of bad words and heck used to replace hell. Well, I'm saying hell. Okay, H-E, double off your sticks, hell. It was called Hell Valley in this film. Because this is what Biff did, and this is when Biff got, you know, after he got the, you know, almanac, sports almanac, and, you know, flipped through it and, you know, attained his wealth, he took over Hill Valley, turned into Hell, which became Hell Valley. And, you know, I sure when it was in the movie, it didn't have a name. That whole scene where Marty is walking through what was Hill Valley scares the holy socks out of me to this day. And here's why it still scares me. 
one. I'm an environmentalist, and I have had that pretty much has drummed into my head ever since I was like five. So I pretty much can't watch it to this. Well, I can watch that scene. I can watch it now. It just it did make me very upset even watching it now as an adult. I just now don't cry when I see it. <laughs> But, the reason why I watched that part, and why it still kind of lingers with me, yeah, I'm going to grab my chest like I have heartburn. Yeah, not like I have enough problems as it is. Because, uh, health-wise, it was just horrible. You saw, like, a... Sorry, <sighs> gotta put words in my mouth so I can speak, so I can talk with you, and they're just not coming through correctly. I don't know why, but uh, this particular scene usually frightens me for a lot of reasons because it's supposed to be about oh, oh yes, uh, they have a toxic waste plant not too far away from, well, just a lot of things. People, I ain't closed down a school, so there's no education, no one can get, uh, or have anything to do with education. At you think of today's world is, <laughs> well, we're not necessarily being fair to kids and letting them have a decent education, yet throwing it in their faces that they're complete idiots. You should just makes my mind go all sorts of ways. I just hope in the next 20 years, things will get better. As I knock on my wooden, wooden desk, I just hope it does better, and hope things do get better. Because, <laughs> um, I definitely, I, not to break point, is, and I guess the whole point of the movie and I don't want to forget this part, was basically to show how child, how teenagers, adults, whatever, do not view their parents' childhood like theirs, and in a way, it does have that a uniting ability. How they did things in the 1980s was different from what they did in the 1950s, just a little, but the behavior of bullies, how people treat each other in this particular time period, still count. And, you know, there's still bullies in the 1950s, there's still bullies in the 80s, there's still, there's still bullies in this time period, which we're trying to fight against, which me is just me, but uh, I hope we work that and it gets better, hopefully. Uh, what other things? Um, yeah, but that was the whole point of this film. And in a way, I do see where it's uniting to that. That they do a lot of the same things that they did in the original film. And they carry it through. That's the, you know, from the 1980s to the 1950s, or 1950s to the 1980s. Where it comes first. It's, the 50s should have came first, by the way. Then the 80s, but hey. Uh, let's see. And that's why I brought up about the ants. Why I brought up about your parents and you, or parents and children, because that's what I want my vlogs to be about, about uniting both. Because to me, I really do not want to divide either one. You two are together for a reason. Your mother and father adopted you or brought you into their home. Because in some cases, it is because they want a child. So, um, not to hurt your feelings. Feelings? Or anyone's feelings. In fact, forget I said that part. Okay, I'm sorry for saying that. Just ahead of time. But, uh, yeah, that, 
your parents do understand and get where you're coming from for the most part. However, okay, I understand that there are times where parents forget what it's like to be a kid. So it's typical, it's, it happens to every generation that it comes through. So it's alright, you'll be fine. I didn't get through it and everything. I know I'm just throwing a lot of cliches. I wish I could be more emotive and grab you with my eyes, but then wouldn't that be kidnapping and technically be wrong? <laughs> Anyways, uh, this is Emily O'Malley signing out for the night, and, you know, good night. What are you still doing here? Go away! Chew! Eat it! The video is over! Why are you still here? Suit yourself! Oh, and follow the links down below. Oh. Uh, yeah. Right, that's why you're still watching this video. Anyways.